Welcome to this algebra lesson, part two of completing the square. Last time, we learned that to complete the square for an expression x squared plus any number times x, all we have to do is take half the middle coefficient and square it. The method of completing squares can be used to solve quadratic equations. Later on, you'll see it used in calculus when you study circles and conic sections. Let's take a look at the four examples that we'll do. In this part, we'll do example one. Ready? We see the six in the middle. We know now that we're gonna divide that by two and square it. But that eight is in the way, isn't it? So let's move it to the other side. Plus 8 moved to the other side is negative 8. Now let's complete the square. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. We have to add 9 to the other side also. We get x minus 3 squared is equal to 1 x minus 3 can be either plus or minus 1, right? Move negative 3 over to the other side. x is 3 plus or minus 1. x is either 3 plus 1 or 3 minus 1. x is either 4 or 2. Wow, so the answers came out pretty simple. Do you have any questions or comments? Yes, Chipmunk. Miss G, isn't it easier to just factor? I'm glad you're paying attention. You're right. It is much easier to factor in this case. X squared minus 6X plus 8 factors into x minus 2 times x minus 4, which gives us x is 2 or 4. Not all problems can be factored though, so that's when the method of completing the square comes in handy. In example 4, we'll actually derive a formula from it. It's called the quadratic formula. That would give you another option to solve these problems. So until next time, have fun. Bye.